Welcome to another painting tutorial. In this one, we're going to look at the new Orc bomber, uh, the Burna bomber, actually. Uh, here's what mine looked like when I was all complete, and uh, basically followed uh, a lot of the White Dwarf painting tutorial, which I believe is now available on the iPad. But uh, I'll tell you what you what colors I used in the new GW paint range. So uh, starting off. Um, here's a couple pictures. These are from the assembly tutorial that I did, uh, just comparing it to the uh, Storm Talon. There's a Eldar Venom Land Raider, just to give you some scale comparisons. Anyways, okay, so first things first. Um, to get this nice red color here, what I did is I spray painted it uh, white, so I w did a white primer on everything, and then uh, went over it all with a uh, red spray. Um, it wasn't anything special, just a flat red. Anything will do. Um, also to mention, um, I, because I'm going to be painting over just about everything, including the red, this is just for a base coat. So it doesn't have to match exactly. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking out the different colors that I'm going to be doing. So this is base coats. Um, I've got uh, corn red uh, on these darker ones and I got Mephiston red sort of on the the main areas. Now the red I had matched very closely. Um, as well what I'm doing here is I'm putting a, a base of uh, Warplock bronze on a lot of the metal bits and uh, some of the areas will also be lead belcher. So using uh, either either or for the metal and I believe actually in this particular picture we have um, Agrax Earth Shade, so the the Devil and Mud replacement on uh, those, and I'm painting in the panel lines and around the rivets with a fine line of that. Um, for the white, I use uh, Ceramite White, um, so whatever base color white will do, and that's just that wash around there, and I'm going to touch that up later. So not too many base colors on this thing. Um, the metal, after getting the the brown wash, also received the Nulin oil or Nulin oil or whatever it is over all of that. And uh, yeah, I think at this point I'm touching up the red here with uh, the Mephiston red as well. And you can see um, some of the different colors. There. So that red there, that was shiny, that's the spray paint, and the other parts are where I painted over with the uh, the base color. So you can see also um, on the metal, uh, the the two layers of washes really knock down the shininess of it. And uh, to get the specific look that I'm, that I'm going to end up with, you really need to do both of those washes. Uh, and you'll see where that's going in a bit. Okay, for the uh, orc, uh, the, the pilot here, I used um, uh, wag green for the base coat, and then I highlighted that up with uh, war boss green and scarce neck green. Um, as well, there was a bell tan, beel tan, whatever it is, um, wash in the middle there, uh, and that that just helps blend the colors a little bit. There's the uh, the grot gunner. Um, so I used a brighter green, so that's sort of the uh, the warpstone green, um, which is a uh, Caliban green base coat, uh, warpstone glow, and then moot green for the uh, the edge highlights, and that also received the wash. For uh, for the fur on here, I used uh, Zandri dust as well as a, a wash of uh, the Agrax Earthshade, and I highlighted that up with a bit of. Uh, uh, Ishbanti, Ish, uh, somebody corrected me the other time. Ishbant, Ish, the bone one. Ah, sorry about the pronunciation. Um, for the leather bits here, uh, I used uh, what is it? Rhinox hide uh, with a wash of um, Agrax Earthshade, and then I used uh, just one layer of Doom Bull brown, just to give some uh, hint of of grays there, or not grays, browns. And uh, the teeth, that was the Zandri dust, um, that got a, a wash of the, the brown, and uh, this a bit of screaming skull on the edges. Okay, so this is after I've dry brushed it with uh, the, Necron, um, the Necron compound. So that's the silver uh, dry compound, that the new dry brushing paints. And uh, you, so you can see how it kind of brings out... Um, the metallic look again. So I've got my nice deep areas which are still browns, which kind of look rusty, 
and then these areas are kind of a dull silvery finish and I actually uh, quite like how that turned out and I think I'm going to use this technique for a lot of my Orky vehicles. Um, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm picking out the edges here with uh, which one did I use? I'm pretty sure I used Iron Breaker um, not Rune Fang. Rune Fang would have been quite bright so Iron Breaker I'm going to be painting all of these edges and the rivets and all of the uh, sort of the edge highlights. Uh, then I went back and I painted all the bombs up. Um, I had kind of neglected those and getting closer to the end and I realized I need to get those finished up. I debated magnetizing them and in the end I just glued them all on. Um, if I have to count them I'll just use a dice underneath the on the base but uh, decided not to magnetize them. Just too much work from too many of them um, and magnets are expensive so didn't do that. Okay, so now I'm, uh, you can see there I'm painting around the edges of all of these here. So just using a fine brush to paint the edges and pick out those areas. I, I did some gold bits in here just to help break things up in terms of uh, different colors. And you can see that's that same brown uh, highlighted with the Doom Bull brown as the other guy. Um, for this here, what I did is I painted it uh, the Mephiston red and then I gave it a wash of uh, Kaborg crimson. So that really darkened it down, and then I painted on sort of all the flat surfaces here uh, were given the Evil Sun, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then Wild Rider Red was just sort of on the edges and the uh, tips of the rivets. And same sort of thing around here. I didn't use Wild Rider Red. I just used the Evil Suns, um, and so I'm painting sort of edge highlights on all the panels, and this helps break up the surfaces. For the, the darker panels, you can see a couple of them here and there. Th those are a base coat of the corn red, and then they were highlighted with a uh, Wazdaka red. So Wazdaka is just a sort of a fine line. Because it's orcs, it doesn't have to be super straight, but uh, as reasonably straight as you can. And the idea is you're just trying to give it like on a halo sort of effect just around the outside of everything here. And picking up as much of the detail as you can. It just helps it... Um, helps it stand out a little bit more. You're adding kind of a fake layer of contrast to make up for the uh, the scale. Um, painting some of the white areas. I, I decided I didn't like paint, base coating it white and washing it so I, I redid this with a gray and so I think that's uh, Celestra gray and then I highlighted that up with a bit of white. Uh, actually I think that's Uthan Uthian gray and then I'm going to be do white edge highlights on it. And you can see some of this texture here, that's because I messed up with my spray paint, so be really careful with that. So here's the uh, the white there, so uh, I went over everything with a gray, left a bit of the browns visible there, and tried to blend it as best as I could. And did the same thing on the tail, added a couple of little patchy areas just to help uh, make it look a little bit more orky patchwork. So here was what I'm doing is I'm adding a layer of gloss varnish to all the areas I'm going to put decals on. So the leading edge here is going to have a decal um, on some of the wing panels. And uh, what I have is just some sort of a craft uh, glaze. You can also use the uh, GW Art Coat, which um, is the same sort of a thing. And uh, the idea there is you're smoothing up the surface to make the decals stick better. Oh, that one doesn't belong. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I've put the decals on. I use some of those, uh, the decal set solution. You can get it from your local hobby store. And what that does is it helps really pull the decal in and conform to anything. Once the decals are down, you want to put a layer of um, uh, non-glossy finish. So uh, the, uh, the clear medium from GW. Um, the one I have is actually the heavy metal medium from the heavy metal paint set back at Christmas. But the uh, the new range has a uh, Lanaman medium, I think that's how you pronounce it. And you just paint that over it and that just seals everything in and kind of gets rid of some of this gloss. Uh, then what I did is I'm going over everything with a Celestra Grey. Actually I think that's a Mechanica Standard Grey. This is a darker grey. And painting on where I think there's going to be scratches. So trying to make everything directional to give the idea of flying and zooming around and uh, making those jagged. What I'm going to do after that 
you can see some so I did this kind of everywhere all over the model just to help break things up again and I tried to paint over some of the decals as well and then I went over with um, the rune fang steel so that's the bright silver and I painted sort of the same sort of thing just inside of that so the idea there is your paint scratched away and you have exposed metal right in the center tried to do a little bit of that on this uh, big long checker pattern there and uh, just all over the model to give the impression of uh, scratched and dinged paint from whatever reason and you can see there how that's looking so yeah I added some decals uh, around the, uh, the the grot gunner on the wings uh, here and there uh, on the body again just to add a little bit more detail without uh, without it having to be molded plastic I guess here's the um, the bombs getting glued on and uh, the underside there you can see kind of the the landing ski um, okay now for canopies or cockpits or whatever you want to call it the uh, the, the simulated glass uh, I've got this stuff here again from a hobby store um, and basically what it is is white glue uh, I don't know if it's any different than normal white glue but the whole idea here is that it's um, it's not going to give you uh, problems like plastic glue where you get stringies all over it and and mess up your plastic and super glue if you use it in confined spaces like the inside of a cockpit you'll get hazing or like a, a fog that uh, that forms on there and it'll really mess up the cockpit so the idea of this is kinda of like white glue with a toothpick or a really fine brush I use a fine brush um, you just paint it on all of the contact surfaces that the the cockpit's going to go on so I'm actually showing you right here so just a regular brush and I'm painting it on there and yeah not a great picture but you have a bead all the way along there so I'm going to paint that all the way around nice reasonably thick I guess and then I just press the cockpit into that so there's glue all the way through there and uh, that won't mess up any of the the, the glass here and uh, seems reasonably permanent. I don't know if it's super durable but uh, durable enough for the way I try to treat my models. And I did the same thing with the the other one back there so any of the contact surfaces just put a bead of that on and pressed it in. So here we are all done. Uh, not a lot of uh, complicated things with this. The little bit tricky getting that that decal to sit on there perfectly. Um, if you were to look at it up close you could see some imperfections but for the sake of this tutorial it looks pretty good and uh, yeah you can see all the uh, the paint chips on there how it kind of helps give the impression of zooming along and um, the decals help just give a little bit more orky character so uh, this is going to be a fun model to add to my collection and um, along with the DACA jet that I did you can check out that tutorial as well um, do you think the two of them are going to be uh, pretty fun to use? So, if you have any questions about this, please uh, feel free to post comments below. If you have any um, suggestions for future projects or anything else that you like to mention, please do that. Check out my blog as well. It's like watching paintdry.blogspot.com. Um, please like, share, and uh, do whatever you can to help promote these because every little bit helps. Alright, see you next time.